Here we are, folks. My 10th film review video. This also happens to be the 14th ranked James Bond film, in my opinion. The second best Pierce Brosnan entry, The World Is Not Enough. The film opens with Bond retrieving a large sum of money for Sir Robert King, an old friend of M's. After bringing back the money to MI6, Bond discovers that the money is booby-trapped and rushes to prevent King from being killed, but ultimately fails. Bond then chases the assassin around the waterways of London in an action-packed boat chase, but the assassin commits suicide rather than be captured. After all that, then the pre-title sequence commences. Following that, Bond has M assign him to protect King's daughter, Electra, who Bond fears will be the next target of the terrorist known as Renard. Bond tracks Renard to Kazakhstan, where he steals some plutonium. Though Renard tries to kill Bond, Bond manages to make his escape, and also gains an ally in Dr. Christmas Jones. Hi. A nuclear physicist. Bond heads to Istanbul, where it turns out that Renard and Elektra are partners, and their plan is to use a nuclear submarine to destroy Istanbul and, in effect, all other competing oil pipelines. Bond also learns that M has been kidnapped, Elektra's revenge for MI6's involvement in her kidnapping by Renard years earlier. With some help, Bond is able to rescue M, kill Elektra and Renard, and save the world once again. As I've said before, I like Pierce Brosnan as James Bond, but here he's on a whole other level. I really like his performance in this one. It's probably his hints at being, you know, a slightly darker Bond. He sort of inches into Timothy Dalton or even Daniel Craig territory occasionally, and I really like it. I think this one and Goldeneye are definitely Pierce Brosnan's best portrayals of James Bond. And out of the two Bond girls, Elektra is definitely the standout. She's not only a really interesting character, but she's also really nice to look at. I really like the pre-title sequence. It's definitely one of the most fun in the entire series. The Q scene was great, and while this wasn't meant to be Desmond Llewellyn's last appearance in the series, you almost sort of get the feeling that this was the last time you were gonna get to see him. It just I get that weird feeling every time I see the scene that that was it. That was meant to be the end for him. I feel I have to address Denise Richards. Well I think she's a lovely woman, she's just not suited for this movie at all. She just doesn't seem to act very well here, and it doesn't really help that she has the absolute Worst Bond girl name ever. Christmas Jones? Really? Who the hell came up with this rubbish? The girls in Austin Powers films have better names, and you know which one I'm talking about. And I actually like the concept of Renard, a man who feels no pain but is dying a slow, horrible death as a result. However, I don't think they really pulled it off as well as they could have, especially since he isn't really the one behind the evil plot. His relationship with Elektra kind of makes me think of another more recent film. Recently, I had a revelation. The film The Dark Knight Rises is sort of a pseudo-remake of this film. In both films, you have the hero facing off against a seemingly invulnerable enemy, who is really working for the woman who, for most of the film, is the love interest of the hero. Also, in both films, you have the villains trying to reshape the world by using a nuclear device to destroy a city. Also, The Dark Knight Rises is the third Christopher Nolan Batman film, and this, The World Is Not Enough, 
is the third Pierce Brosnan and James Bond feud. Pretty weird, huh? Well, of course, you have to note that Christopher Nolan is a huge James Bond fan. So maybe it was intentional. I don't know. It's it's weird. I think I'm going to have to make a video about The Dark Knight Rises because that film is also kind of like a remake of another third film in a different series. Anyway, I really enjoy the film. Overall, I think it's... This one is only slightly ahead of Tomorrow Never Dies in terms of the Pierce Brosnan bonds. My only real issues with the film are Denise Richards and the underutilization of Renard's invulnerability. I give the film 3.5 out of 5 stars. Well, that's it for my review of The World Is Not Enough. I'm a bit worried about my next video because it's the number 13 film on the countdown. Like James Bond, I'm a bit superstitious as well. Hopefully production will go without incident and everything will be fine. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.